Hey guys, this is Subhash Shesh Mishra, your test coach. Today we will learn top 30 selenium interview questions. These are very very important for your interview. Please practice it well before your interview. So you will able to easily crack the interview. Okay, so let's uh, move to our first question. What are the different type of locators in selenium? So first thing you need to tell is what is locator? Locators are the way to identify an HTML element on a web page. Locators help Selenium scripts in uniquely identifying the web elements such as text box, button, etc. present in a web page. For example, you need to click on a button. So how we'll click on that button? First, we need to locate where that button is. Once we find where that button, then we can take an action like we can perform a click or whatever is required on that right so locators help in identifying web element uniquely there are different types of locators by dot id by dot name by dot tag name class name link test partial link test xpath css selector so these are the eight locators which are very frequently used in selenium id is the most common way of locating elements as ids are supposed to be unique for each element then we have name similar to the id attribute selenium also offers users a way to identify the element using the name attribute but contrary to id a web page can have multiple elements with the same name attribute so if we are going to use the name attribute for the identification of web element we should always make sure that the name attribute must contain a unique value okay so then we have tag name so tag name locates all the element with the matching tag name okay then we have class name class name finds elements based on the value of the class attribute if an element has many classes then this will match against each of them we have link text if the targeted element is a link text then you can use the by dot link text locator to locate that element we have partial link text again the target link can be located using a portion of text in the link test of element then we have xpath so xpath is mostly commonly used you know so xpath uses the xml expression to locate an element on the web page xpath is quite useful in locating dynamic elements on a web page xpath can access any element present in the web page even when they have dynamic properties then we have css CSS is known as cascading style sheets. CSS are used extensively to style web pages. So it is an effective medium to locate various web elements. Nowadays, most of the web pages are dynamically designed. So it is very difficult to get a unique ID, name or class to locate element. So in that case, we use CSS selectors. It is very highly used. And one more thing is CSS is faster compared to any other locator strategy so like this you can explain very well these eight locators okay so when they are asking what are the different locators definitely you need to tell these eight locators with proper explanation why it is used when it is used okay let's move to the next question explain the difference between single and double slash in xpath okay some people can also ask what is the difference between absolute path and relative path so mostly these questions are same so what you can answer here is single slash starts selection from the document node it allows you to create absolute path expression so single slash is known as absolute path okay single slash is used to create xpath with an absolute path that is the xpath would be created to start selection from the start node so you need to start from the beginning okay whereas in double slash double slash start selection matching anywhere in the document it enables to create a relative path you can call it as a relative path or double slash double slash is used to create x path with relative path 
that is the expert would be created to start selection from anywhere within the document you can start anywhere from the html document but in the single slash you have to start from the beginning okay so that is the main difference let's move to the next question what is the difference between verify and assert commands so you know assert verifies if the specified condition is true and false if the result is true the next step will be executed in case of false condition the execution would terminate there itself right assert is best used when the check value has to pass for the test to continue to run like a login if login pass then we should continue next test cases else there is no point executing for the test cases right if login is only failing then why you need to go to next things right in that case you can use assert command then we have verify verify verifies if the specified condition is true and false if the result is true the next step will be executed in case of false condition the execution also continue it will not stop there itself where in assert it was stopping there verify is best used to check non critical things it is okay if that non critical test or condition fails we can check other test also so that's the main difference between assert and verify let's move to the next question how you will launch the browser using web driver so we have this syntax like web driver driver equal to new firefox driver chrome driver or internet explorer driver driver one more thing you need to uh, understand here is before initializing the chrome driver or uh, i driver we need to set the path of the driver using system dot set property so if you will do that you will able to launch the web driver okay this is simple let's move to the next what is the major difference between driver dot close and driver dot quit driver dot close command closes the browser's current window if multiple windows are open the current window of focus will be closed in driver dot quit when quit is called on the driver instance and there are one or more browser windows are open it closes all the open browser windows so the main thing is if we will use close function close command then the browser's current window will be closed all other windows will not be closed but if we we'll use driver dot quit then all the browsers open will be closed okay let's move to the next question what are the types of widgets supported by web driver so there are three different widgets we have we have implicit widget explicit widget and fluent widget so first is implicit widget the implicit widget in selenium is used to tell the web driver to wait for a certain amount of time before it throws a no such element exception the default setting is zero once we set the time the web driver will wait for the element for that time before throwing an exception here you can see the syntax driver dot manage dot timeout dot implicit wait then we have timeout then we have time unit dot second so here it will give some time then it will wait for that that much time okay if the element is not located on the web page within that time frame then it will throw an exception okay so that is implicit wait then we have explicit wait explicit wait in selenium is used to tell the web driver to wait for certain conditions or expected conditions or maximum time exceeded before throwing element not visible exception it is an intelligent kind of wait but it can be applied only for specified elements it gives better options than implicit wait as it waits for dynamically loaded ajax elements so here you can see the syntax web driver wait equal to new web driver wait web driver reference then timeout so here we will have different kind of expected conditions uh, like i told before right so it will have some conditions or we can say that expected conditions like if a lot is present if element selection set to be then element to be clickable element to be selected so like that if it is selected wait till that time if a lot is present wait till that time so the conditions will be like that right then we will have the fluent wait so in fluent wait in selenium is used to define maximum time for the web driver to wait for a condition as well as the frequency with which we want to check the condition before throwing an element not visible exception 
It checks for the web element at regular intervals until the object is found or timeout happens. Right. So the syntax you can see here wait wait equal to new fluent wait web driver reference dot without sorry with timeout then duration of seconds we are giving in seconds then pulling every duration of seconds seconds dot ignoring exception dot class so that is the syntax of fluent wait so you can explain all these three different kind of weights even sometime interviews ask directly what is implicit weight or what is explicit weight they can ask individually also okay let's move to the next question mention the types of navigation commands okay what are the navigation commands we have so we have navigate dot back okay so what it will do this command requires no parameters and takes back the user to the previous web page in the web browser history so whatever web page you have opened previously it will take you back there okay so syntax is driver dot navigate dot back okay similarly we have forward function so this command lets the user to navigate to the next web page with reference to the browser history okay so it will move you uh, forward okay then we have navigate dot refresh this command lets the user to refresh the current web page thereby reloading all the web elements so it is like refreshing the browser okay then navigate dot to this command lets the user to launch a new web browser window and navigate to the specified url okay so that's the use of navigation commands okay and uh, for the navigate dot to right you can give driver dot navigate to then the particular url whatever you want to give right in the argument you can pass the particular url let's move to the next question what is the difference between set speed and slip methods so both will delay the speed of execution both set speed and slip function so first thing is we have thread dot slip it will stop the current java thread for the specified period of time it's done only once okay it will be done only once it takes a single argument in an integer format for example thread dot slip 2000 what it means it will wait for two seconds it waits only once at the command given at slip so wherever you will give this statement thread dot slip 2000 it will wait for two seconds there itself okay it will wait once in that place okay then we have set speed so set speed it is like for a specific amount of time it will stop the execution for every selenium command okay it takes a single argument in integer format for example selenium dot set speed 2000 it will wait for two seconds runs each command after set speed delay by the number of milliseconds mentioned in set speed this command is useful for demonstration purpose or if you are using a slow web application okay let's move to the next question explain what is the difference between find element and find elements so uh, first thing is find element it finds the first element within the current page using the given locating mechanism it returns a single web element okay so the syntax is web element element equal to driver dot find element then we are giving the x path okay so the point to remember here is it returns a single web element okay whereas in find elements so using the uh, find elements locator mechanism you will find all the elements within the current page it returns a list of web elements so syntax you can see list of web element then we are giving element list with the variable is equal to driver dot find elements then we are giving the x path so it is returning the list of web elements so that is the main difference find element will give a single web element whereas find elements will give a list of web elements okay let's move to the next question what are the different exceptions you had in selenium web driver so this is again a very uh, important question people used to ask because they want to check whether uh, how much you have worked in uh, real time 
so in real time if you have worked it definitely would have got this kind of exception so you can say web driver exception no alert present exception no such window exception no such element exception timeout exception so these are the few exceptions we used to get in selenium web driver okay let's move to the next question how to handle multiple windows in selenium this is a very common question asked in selenium interview in real time we face many scenarios where an application throws multiple pop-ups we can easily achieve this using window handles in selenium web driver we need to switch we need to use switch to method which allows us to switch control from one window to other so there are mainly two methods one is get window handle and another one is window handles so get window handle is like a method which helps to get the window handle of the current window whereas in get window handles that method helps to get the handles of all the windows open okay so here is a piece of code which is used to uh, switch one window to another so what we are doing here we are first opening the browser then we are maximizing the browser okay using driver.manage window.maximize then we are opening one uh, website uh, here we are opening nokri website then what we are doing then we are using string main window equal to driver dot get window handle so here we are finding the parent window and uh, we are assigning to a string okay then what we are doing then we are finding we are using set of string set equal to driver dot get window handles so here it is returning the number of windows open by the web driver and it will return to set of strings okay then finally what we are doing we are comparing the uh, comparing whether main window is not equal to child window if not equal then we are closing it okay and uh, finally we are switching to the main window so you can refer to this code if you want to switch to one window to another okay let's move to the next one what is the difference between get window handle and get window handles function okay so in our previous question we already discussed about what is get window handle and get window handles uh, let's uh, discuss one more time so in get window handle it is used to get the address of the current browser where the control is and return type is string okay so it is finding the current browser address of the current browser and it is returning as a string whereas in get window handles it is used to get the address of the all open browser and its return type is set of string it will give multiple values uh, let's move to the next question how to handle frames in selenium okay so first we need to understand what is a frame or what is i frame basically we call it as i frame an inline frame or iframe is a web page which is embedded in another web page or an html document embedded inside another html document okay the iframe is often used to add content from other sources like an advertisement into a web page the iframe is defined within the iframe tag it will be iframe tag okay to bring control on html frame you can use switch to frame method we can switch over the elements in frames using three ways one is by index by name or id by web element okay so here you can see right we have written one piece of code where we are switching the frame by id okay so here what we are doing first we are navigating to the browser then nav navigating to the page consisting an iframe then we are switching the frame by id then we are moving back to the parent frame then we are switching back to the main window so that's how you can handle the frames in selenium or you can switch the frame in selenium okay let's move to the next question how to handle alerts in selenium web driver okay so first thing we need to understand what is an alert alert is a message or notification box that notifies the user about some information or ask for permission to perform a certain kind of operation it may be used for warning purpose as well okay in selenium there are three types of alerts present one is simple alert one is prompt alert one is confirmation alert 
So simple alert is used to notify a simple warning message with an OK button. Prompt alert will ask the user to input the required information to complete a task. Okay, then confirmation alert. Confirmation alert is basically used for confirmation of some task. For example, do you wish to continue a particular task? You have to type or click on yes or no. So that will be a confirmation alert. So in Selenium WebDriver, alert interface provides few methods which are widely used like void dismiss. It is mainly used to click on the cancel button of the alert. So the syntax is driver dot switch to dot alert dot dismiss. Similarly, we have accept. So it is used to click on the OK button of the alert. The syntax is driver dot switch to dot alert dot accept. Then we have get text. So using this get text method, you can capture the alert message. So the syntax again here is driver dot switch to dot alert dot get text. Similarly, you have send keys. So send keys is also used to send some data to alert box. Okay. So syntax is driver dot switch to dot alert dot send key. Then whatever text you want to send, you can send it here. Okay. Then finally, we can easily switch to alert from the main window by using selenium's dot switch to method. Okay. Fine. Let's move to the next question. How to handle a drop down in selenium of driver and how to select a value from drop down. Okay. So here the answer is the by using the select class, we can select a value from the drop down. So first thing is select class in WebDriver is used for selecting and deselecting options in a drop down. The object of select type can be initialized by passing the drop down web element as a parameter to its constructor. So here if you will see right, uh, we have the syntax web element, then uh, my select element equal to driver dot find element by dot name drop down. So here we are finding the drop down. We are locating that drop down. Okay. Then we are telling select drop down equal to new select. Then we are whatever the uh, variable here, right? My select element. We are passing it here. Then what we are telling drop down dot select by index or drop down dot select by value. Then drop down dot select by visible text. So these are the three different ways to select a value from a drop down. Uh, select by index it will be like uh, selection based on index uh, starting from 0 you can give 0 1 2 3 4 5 how many drop downs you will have with that you can see whatever the index you want whatever the drop down index you want you can give that value okay so then we have select by value so this is on selection based on the values so for example in in a drop down there are different different countries like india or uh, us uk something like that if you want to select india then you can give drop down dot select by value india okay then select by visible text so again selection of option that displays text matching the given argument so whatever given arguments or given value here it should match that text okay so that's how you can handle drop down in selenium web driver let's move to the next one how to handle keyboard and mouse actions in selenium okay so we need to use action class here so action class in selenium is a built-in feature provided by the selenium for handling keyboard and mouse events it includes various operations such as multiple events clicking by control key drag and drop events and many more these operations from the action class are performed using the advanced user interaction API in Selenium WebDriver. There are few commonly used keyboard and mouse events provided by the action class. So these are like click and hold, context click, double click, drag and drop. So move to element, there are many more. So you have click and hold, click and hold clicks without releasing at the current mouse location. Then you have context click. It is used to perform a it is used to perform a context click at the current mouse location. It's more of a right click mouse action. Then we have double click. 
it performs a double click at the current mouse location then you have a drag and drop it perform a click and hold at the location at the source element moves to the location of the target element then releases the mouse we have move to element it shifts the mouse to the center of the element so that's how we can handle keyboard and mouse actions using selenium let's move to the next question how to take screenshots in web driver so text screenshot interface can be used to take screenshots in web driver so get screenshot as is a method which is used to save the screenshot and here is the syntax file scr file equal to text screenshot driver dot get screenshot as whatever the output type you can give dot file okay let's move to the next question how to upload a file in selenium web driver so we can do it by using send keys or robot class method so first you need to locate the test box and set the file path using send keys and click on the submit button okay so uh, first uh, here if you will see right the syntax we are locating the uh, browse button web element browse equal to driver dot find element by dot id upload file then we are uh, passing the path of the file to be uploaded using send keys so browse dot send keys here is the path of the file what we want to upload so that's how you can upload a file in selenium web driver let's move to the next question what is selenium and what are the types of selenium so selenium is the set of selenium commands which are used to test the web application we can test the broken links the existence of some object on the ui ajax functionality alerts window list options and a lot more using selenium there are three types of selenium one is action so action commands which interact directly within the application with the application then we have assertions assertion verifies the current state of the application with an expected state then we have accessors so it allows the user to store certain values to a user defined variable okay let's move to the next question what are the challenges in handling ajax call in selenium web driver this is very important question people used to ask what are the challenges in handling ajax call in selenium web driver the challenges faced in handling ajax call in selenium web driver are uh, listed here you can see using pause command for handling ajax call is not completely reliable long pause time makes the test unacceptably slow and increases the testing time instead wait for condition will be more helpful in testing ajax applications it is difficult to access the risk associated with particular ajax application so one more thing is given full freedom to developers to modify ajax application makes the testing process challenging one more thing is creating automated test request may be difficult for testing tools as such ajax application often use different encoding or serialization technique to submit post data let's move to the next question how can we handle windows based pop up selenium doesn't support windows based application it is an automation testing tool which supports only web application testing we can handle windows based pop ups in selenium using some third party tools such as auto it robot class etc okay let's move to the next question what is the difference between type keys and type commands okay so type first we will understand what is type so it populates the value attribute using javascript it just take the entire string and put it in there at one time and if we we'll use type key it simulates each keystroke and it emulates like actual user typing so if we we'll use type key it will give a experience like actual user is typing but if we we'll give type function it is like a complete string it will uh, put directly right it will just take the entire string and put it there in one time okay so that is the difference between type and type key let's move to the next question what are the technical challenges in selenium okay so these are the few technical challenges which we have listed here so selenium supports only web based application 
okay it doesn't support the bitmap comparison for any reporting related capabilities have to depend on third party tool we have to depend on third party tools uh, you know test and we used to use no vendor support for tool compared to commercial tools like hp uft then as there is no object repository concept in selenium maintainability of objects become difficult user has to use some third party tools like auto it for handling simple windows objects like save download import export and all okay so these are the major challenges in selenium let's move to the next question explain how can you handle colors in web driver we can get the value of color using get css value method provided by selenium web driver here you can see the example string color equal to driver dot find element by dot xpath and finally what we are doing dot get css value color okay so in the in this code right css attribute color is stored in a string variable okay and uh, the variable is color here and uh, this code will return value in rgb format okay and finally we need to convert that value to hexadecimal code okay then we can means this is how you can handle the colors in web driver okay let's move to the next question explain how can you log in into any site if it's showing any authentication pop up for password and username okay so here is the syntax uh, http username password url and example says we are giving the username colon then password at the rate then the url where you are trying to log in okay so that's how you can directly log in so if it is asking for a authentication pop up okay let's move to the next one how can you handle cookies in selenium so in selenium there are different methods to add delete and get cookies okay so first we'll see what is uh, how to add cookie okay so this is the function or this is the syntax driver dot manage dot add cookie then argument uh, we are passing here okay so here we can pass the cookie name so if we'll pass the cookie name that cookie name will get added okay so that's why add cookie is used then similarly we have delete cookie and here also we can pass the cookie name so it will delete a cookie okay and similarly we have delete all cookies it will delete all the cookies for the for, for that current domain okay then we have get cookies it will ge it will get all the cookies for the current domain okay similarly we have get cookie name then argument we have so here we can give the cookie name so it will fetch that particular cookie okay let's move to the next question what is the same origin policy how can you avoid same origin policy so same origin policy is a feature adapted for security purpose according to this policy a web browser allows scripts from one web page to access the contents of another web page provided both the pages have the same origin the origin refers to a combination of the url scheme host name and port number okay the same origin policy prevents a malicious script on the page to access sensitive data on another web page consider a javascript program used by google.com this test application can access all google domain pages like google.com/login or google.com/mail like that however it cannot access pages from other domains like yahoo.com and all right so selenium rc was introduced to address this origin policy the server acts as a client configure http proxy and tricks the browser into believing that selenium core and web application being tested come from the same origin okay let's move to the next question what is object repository an object repository is an essential entity in any ui automation which allows a tester to store all objects that will be used in the scripts in one or more centralized locations rather than scattered all over the test scripts okay let's move to the next one 
what is POM or page object model? This is very very important question. Most of the people ask about this. So every web page of the application has a corresponding page class that is responsible for locating the web elements and performing actions on them. Page object model is a design pattern that helps create object repository for the web elements. POM improves code reusability and readability. Multiple test cases can be run on the object repository. Let's move to the next question. What is Selenium Grid and how it works? Selenium Grid is a tool used together with Selenium RC to run tests on different machines against different browsers in parallel. That is running multiple tests at the same time against different machines running different browsers and operating systems. In simple words, it is used to distribute your test execution on multiple platforms and environments concurrently. Okay. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try to explain it. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.